So guess who started watching Walking Dead and now has a new favourite villain? And before we start, this is going to be a proper replica make, well as close as I can get it, but using actual barbed wire. This is something that's not going to be con safe. So for my younger viewers, which I know I have, this is not a build I really recommend for you. And to people who do want to make one like this, don't take it out in public, don't take it to conventions or events. Um, I know that that should be common sense, but this is the internet nowadays, so I'm just covering my back. With that being said, let's get on, because I want to smash some heads. Right, so this is the base for our replica Lucille. This is just a 32 inch wooden bat I got off eBay. It was about 10 quid, it wasn't that expensive at all. So there's a few things we gotta do to this. Obviously this bat has a logo printed on it, so we need to sand that logo off. And it's also a little bit too light, so I'm actually gonna sand down the entire bat, because it's already got like a, a wax sort of polish on it. And then go over it with some wood tints just to make it a little bit darker. Not too much, but just a little bit. Then after that's done, Negan has this little oval shape on his bat, like some kind of logo for whatever's in the Walking Dead universe. So we've got to paint that on as well. So the varnish has been sanded off, so it's made it a little bit lighter than it was before. I've just given it a quick wipe down with a wet cloth to make sure there's no dust on it. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to paint the oval on first before I seal the wood with the wood stain, just so, well again, that paint's sealed as well. So what I've done is I've gone and printed off an oval that's going to be roughly the right shape to go on here. I just need to very carefully cut around the outside edge and the inside edge and use a bit of repositionable spray adhesive to stick it to the bat and then just use spray paint over the top of that. And we can just sand that down a little bit so it's a little bit more worn away and then start doing the stain. Here we go, this is uh, what I'm going to use to stain the wood. Now, this is perks of having your dad being a builder. Lots of stuff like this is just kind of lying around. So, I'm actually using a can of this, UV protection oil for wood. As you can see though, it's uh, the colour's too light on here. But I'm going to be playing around with a little bit of resin in the future, so I've got uh, these resin pigments which I've just put in here and it's made a much nicer colour to go with the bat. Obviously that's not something you have to do, it's just a case of finding a wood tint or like a wood sort of coating oil like this one. That's going to be the right colour for the bat. I just, I use what I have around the house because it's a lot easier than going out and buying a big can of something for just one little prop. So I've got a cloth here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit on the end of the cloth and just go over the bat. It's probably going to need a couple of layers of this stuff because every layer you do it will go darker. It's just going to be a case of seeing what I'm happy with and just stopping when it gets to the point that I think, yep, yeah, that's good. So about three meters of barbed wire. Barbed wire is something you can get off of eBay. Uh, you can get them in fairly big rolls, but I didn't need that much to do this bat. And this is just some we had left over. So that has been sitting in the back of the shed. It had a load of like cobwebs and dirt on it. So I just gave it a quick clean. And now I'm just gonna add some paint to it. I got a bit of black and a bit of red, just a little bit. So it kind of looks like it has been used before and cleaned, but some of the dirt's still in the gaps. Cause at the moment it's just a, a dull silver. So you join me outside here because we have a power cut so there's no lights on in the workshop so it's a bit too dark to film 
so I thought I'd come outside because now this stuff has finally dried on the baseball bat it had to dry overnight if it wasn't for that this would be a one day build but that looks a lot nicer now it looks darker and it looks a little bit more worn like it's actually had some action which is nice it's time to add the barbed wire so the barbed wire has obviously been painted and we've got three meters worth of it here and the barbed wire is not going to stay on the bat on its own so what we've got is these now you can buy like metal staples like this already done again i kind of just like to use what i have in the house so these are actually made out of nails that were just bent and cut so these have got a sharp point already you shouldn't have to drill any holes for these to go and should just be able to hammer in but I still want to be careful because obviously I don't want to split the wood or damage the bat too much so this is going to be the awkward bit of trying to get it to match the shapes that we've got on these very badly printed pictures so I'm going to work my way from the top of the bat and work down and there's a bit of barbed wire that actually goes over the top but it's not in the middle it's to one side and looking at the pictures it's to the one side that's closest to this marking here so we're just going to go off of that staple one is in obviously there's a color difference which we will fix a little bit later but it's in Not gonna lie, that was way harder than expected to put it on. You can see where it scratched up all the varnish underneath. Trying to get it to sit flush to a bat is really, really hard. So that is our Lucille, but I'm not gonna stop there because I don't want a clean bat. I want to add blood and guts and gore, but not too much. Just enough that it looks really menacing. So what I'm gonna do is the same technique that I've done on my zombie stormtrooper. I've got a really nice sort of wet blood look going on with sort of bits of brain and goop and that's precisely what I'm gonna do. So for those who haven't seen the zombie trooper build and don't know how I do the blood, basically it is this stuff which is five minute epoxy with some fake blood. Now this stuff it's supposed to mix with five minute epoxy but it didn't and that's what created all these sort of little horrible bits of flesh or those little random globules I guess because this stuff is really oily fake blood which I wasn't expecting and I think it's the oil in that that reacts to this and it just makes it congeal but to get the actual blood I mix watercolour paint with this and that gives us uh, a nice colour, watercolour paint goes well with that and it also dries shiny which makes it look really wet and really cool so that is what we're going to use for our Lucille blood and guts. But before we add all the blood and gore, I'm just gonna go over it with a couple of acrylic paint. Now all the epoxy is on the top of the bat and we've got a couple little bits of brain matter in there as well. This thing looks absolutely savage. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this to dry for a little bit and then we are going to go have some fun.
look at my dirty girl. Ew. <laughs> This is the first time I'm ever going to have to clean watermelon off of a prop. Thank you very much for watching this build video and thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping support this channel. Now YouTube is making it harder for smaller channels to get out there as much. So thank you very much to Jeff Kenny for pledging to have his name shouted out. And you can also pledge to have your name up on the screen during my videos. You'll also get access to behind the scenes photos of builds before anybody else sees them as well as little videos here and there that people on YouTube aren't going to see and early access to complete YouTube videos. But thank you very much for watching this video and as always I'll see you in the next one. So it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Lucille.